Hello, can you hear me, Jennifer? Yes, I can. You can call me Jen. Jen. Does it drive you crazy with the full name? Uh, sometimes. It's like, you know, my mom is talking to me, you know, Jennifer. <laughs> you just feel like you're in trouble sometimes. But some people prefer <laughs> it, so it's fine. I understand. All Do right. you know, did anybody sign up for this tonight? You know what? I didn't get to check in with Scott, so I'm not sure. No worries. So we have 14 surveys in. Oh, nice. They all want deep water, like I do? Uh, they want some deep water, yeah. So deep water is, I think, the highest ranking in that category. And I did then, have a survey. <laughs> you did or did not? Uh, I think I took the test survey, okay. but that was it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's popular. Um, you know, lap lanes were also popular, but what's coming back are the amenities for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, so that's so like parties. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And in fact, someone wrote a comment about uh, being able to have birthday parties and wanting that and knowing that that's a revenue generator. Yeah. So that was good. Jeremy's on our team, right? He's not yep. a, okay. Correct. Yep. I'll let him in. I know, I, I think I like ask every time, I'm like, who's Jeremy? <laughs> he comes in and I'm like, oh, that's, I remember him. <laughs> yeah, so you'll actually, will start to talk to, I, I'm really here just for this process. So you'll start mm -hmm. to see and hear from Jeremy more. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm trying to eat some food while we get ready. No, you should. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing pretty good. I'll be right back. I got to give my dog some food and water <laughs> or he's going to be loud throughout the entire meeting. Jeremy, I'm putting my house on the market in January. Are you really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hannah and I are beginning to discuss what we're going to be doing here. We're likely going to be renting our house again for another year. Gotcha. Well, there's, it's, it's kind of hard to do much else than that right now. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, hopefully, cause you guys just moved in. Hopefully, um, yeah, you know, I mean, things no, can open up and you guys can walk over downtown. Yeah. No, the plan was just to stay in the house for a year, but we just love it too much. Yeah. And we're well, not ready. ready it to works. Move, so. Yeah. It's super yeah. cute. It's a great location. Yeah. I don't blame just, you at all just haven't been able to take advantage of the location yet. Yeah. As much as I'd like to anyway. Jen, are you gonna record? Uh, yep, we're already recording. Oh, I see. Oh, great. <laughs> are we gonna edit that down before we post it? Because we're talking about the fact that um, I'm gonna be selling my house in January. <laughs> Pull that out of there. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Oh, how's Hi, everybody? Hey, Scott. Oh, I got my computer working. It's good to see your face. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> good to see everybody else. Scott, did you happen to get anybody right in to you? No, I did not. I didn't get any emails, no phone calls. So a question that I have for everybody is um, if nobody comes, just want to get on the same page. If nobody comes, um, still recording the presentation and posting it. Yes, I would say so. Okay. okay. Very good. Just want to make sure. Okay, um, I think this is everybody from the city. I want to run just real quick while I have you on the line here. Your survey, you've had 14 people respond. Um, so your last push produced, produced some, so that's good here. Uh, most of the participants are going to be older, so over 25 years of age, which again, we, we would expect that. Um, 
most of them are not currently utilizing the community center. 70% of them. Um, I can say between how they use it now and how they would use it if it received improvements, that did go up. So it's, even though these people are not reporting, are reporting not utilizing it now, um, there is a, a higher rate of response saying, yes, I would use it if improvements were to be made. So that's, that's what we want to see here. Um, it's probably no surprise, but um, the overall satisfaction is very low with the pool. Um, again, these are not things we're gonna talk about today, but I um, just wanna tell you. Uh, when it comes to the types of activities people are interested in, swim lessons is the absolute highest. General open swim is second to that. And lap swimming and water fitness come after that. Uh, but what's interesting is with lap swimming and water fitness being so high, uh, the, the, the uh, features for kids are ranking high. Um, so the in-water bench is included in that. Water sprays and features for toddlers, youth play structure, that type of thing are very supported. So those are all good things. Um, the zero depth entry and shallow water um, are the two uh, most reported as, as being uh, uh, interested. Zero depth is the number one space that people are interested in. A few other things here. Um, someone has brought up a lazy river like Matt Ross Community Center. Um, so I know the current channel was taken off of the list, um, but it has made its way back onto the survey. And, and for general citizens, um, it's not surprising that we saw that, but I just wanted to tell you that that has creeped uh, back in. And then there has been at least one, if not several comments about birthday parties, which lead to families, it leads to little ones, it leads to wanting to utilize this space more than just a general open swim. Um, so Kelly's coming back in because she was having trouble with her audio. Sounds good. Was Ashley coming in? You know what, I'm not 100% sure, but let me message her and see if she plans on attending. Okay. How about now, Kelly? Yeah, Jen, it looks like her audio is not even connecting at all. Um, there should be an option to, to dial in. Maybe that would work for you, Kelly. Or if you've got the Zoom app on a smartphone, that could work also. Not super ideal, but options. What are y'all up to for the holiday? You working all next week? You taking it off? I feel like I've um, had this conversation several times and I'm like, well, travel isn't a thing. So I'm hunkering down and <laughs> saving my vacation time for when I can travel. I don't yeah. blame you on that at all. It's about what I'm doing. I'm taking Thursday off. That's it. Mm. Both Thursdays. Do you have the policy of you, you have to use, you have a maximum and if you go over your maximum, you lose it if you don't use it? Yeah, but it rolls over until it builds up to that maximum. So you can build up quite a bit of time. I don't remember how many hours it is. It's a lot. Yeah. I ordered from, have you heard of the upper cut? It's a butcher. Okay, and no, maybe, I haven't heard of it. Maybe in Liberty. 
No, I haven't heard that. Cut. So <clears throat> we're we're staying home, um, and the family is not. Oh, it's in KCMO. Nine seven six nine North Cedar Avenue, and uh, so so they're a local local butcher, and they um, they fly in seafood, fresh seafood, and they do it every every few days. So I ended up um, placing an order through them. And that was my, my family's gift. They got some pork ribs and shrimp, and then we're doing um, some seafood as well. So I'm pretty excited for that. Sounds pretty tasty. Yeah, I've never, I've never you know, ordered food like that before. So I'm looking nice. forward to it. Where do they fly in from? I don't recall that. I didn't do the initial research on it. I don't recall. If you like seafood, I could find out and let you know. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I could just look them up online, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just look, I, they're, they're, they're going to uppercut KC, I think is what they're called. But I ended up um, trying lobster tail. I've never made lobster tail, so it'll be an adventure. Ooh, it's so good. Have you it's made it before? Um, yes. Um, so I'm from New England. So when you said they fly in the seafood, I'm like, from where? Where is it from? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I, now I'm sweating. <laughs> So that's why your e, your cell phone had an East Coast area code. Yep. Okay. Yep. From Massachusetts. Yeah. What brought you here? Um, I've kind of moved across, like just keep moving moving west. Um, I've lived in like Cincinnati, Cleveland, Minneapolis, um, and I moved with my ex. He works for um, the company that owns um, Worlds of Fun. Okay. So we moved for that, and then I found this this gig with Parks, and I've been here for just about a little over a year. Okay, okay. Have you lived in Kansas City or the, or the metro area just for the year? Did you live here prior to that? Um, we moved in 2019, and I live we lived in the area like right north of the river, um, just by still in Kansas City, but like right over by Worlds of Fun. And now I live in Midtown. Okay. Haven't really been able to see much of the sites, but <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let in um, Doug Schrader. He is, um, he's with the city and he does a lot of um, our outdoor pools contract stuff. Um, so I feel like he's safe to let in. <laughs> he's the aquatics manager, isn't he? Yeah. That is title. Yeah. And if I love you and duck it, I die. Exactly. Hi, hi, Doug. Hi. hi. Welcome to the meeting. We haven't quite started yet. Thanks. Scott, how many virtual meetings have you done with with your projects, like the like this one? Counting this one, probably one. <laughs> what was it for? <laughs> this one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not uh, too seasoned at it, so I'm learning as I go. <clears throat> yeah. Well, why would you be? If, you I know, appreciate you, you guys don't. taking it over and doing it for me. I appreciate that a lot because I didn't remember to get Zoom on my computer till about 5.45. So <laughs> you're doing I all right. text my son and he told me how to get it set up and messed around with the volume and adjusted the camera direction and here I am. I gotcha. <clears throat> My wife Kelly's pretty good with it too, and so she used her login and did all that to get it going. So, between the two of them, I'm able to get things done. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we do not have anybody in the waiting room. Do you want to give it just a little bit? So I was thinking, um, you know, if, if nobody does call in, I'm actually going to bypass, I don't know if you remember the meeting uh, housekeeping slide. So I'm just going to start um, a few slides in because we'd be recording this for the website and not necessarily um, for the, for the Q&A, right? Back and forth, kind of that live chat. Is that okay if, if I do it that way? And then I, I assume sense. this video is going to be edited anyway. Um, since it started some time ago. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's give it just a little bit. And then Doug, if you can, if you can hear me. Hi, I'm Lauren. Um, let's Hello. wait just, hi, uh, nice to meet you. Um, we're gonna get, let's give it just a little bit. And Doug, just so you know, this was set up um, to, to be more of a live conversation uh, with, with callers from the general public. Um, we may adjust that a little bit as we go, and then we'll present um, uh, just just like we would in front of a kind of a live audience. And the video is recorded and then can be posted. So we're just right. we might have, we're, we might tweak it just a little bit as we go, just because that that format format change a bit. If that's if that's okay with you, Doug. Oh, it's it's fine with me. I mean, I mean, I'm just here to kind of observe. So okay. okay. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Doug. How have you been? Been doing okay. Good, good. Yes. Jeremy, did you hear that, that I may just start a few slides in? Yeah, yeah, that sounds great to me. I'll still do uh, an intro for uh, you and I, Jeremy, and then the, the team as well. Perfect, sounds good. Can you guys still see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, if you guys are good with it, let's go ahead and get started. If that works. Sure. Um, so with this, I don't, I don't envision unless people come in, Jennifer, I assume you'll, you'll just watch out for that. Um, city staff, if you just want to mute your mics, um, I don't know if, unless you want to do uh, like, like we talked about introductions, but um, I'll just introduce Jeremy and I, and then I'll, I'll reference city staff. Um, and then just, we're just going to get right into it. So I don't know that uh, you're going to be answering questions or, or anything like that. So if you wouldn't mind just muting. And then um, if I do need something or Jeremy needs something, we'll just let you know. Okay. Okay. All right, Jeremy, are you ready? Ready to go. Okay. Well, welcome uh, community members of Kansas City, Missouri. My name's Lauren and we also have Jeremy and we are with Water's Edge Aquatic Design and Engineering and Design Firm out of the Kansas City area. And we specialize in um, studying, planning for and developing aquatic centers. Um, so uh, an exciting time for our team, but also for the community of Kansas City as we have uh, been studying and will continue to study and develop the new pool for the Southeast Community Center. So let's get started here. So for today, there are a few key uh, points that, that we want to talk to you about today. Um, and those include uh, uh, what this project is about and what those goals are. Um, talk to you uh, uh, regarding the existing pool conditions at, at the uh, Southeast Community Center. And then also about uh, visioning the, the future use and, and how you may be able to utilize um, uh, this facility uh, in the future. So let's, let's get started with that. So as a part of this project, uh, uh, a, big, a big element of, of the project is to understand what is currently at uh, uh, the existing Southeast Community Center. So um, we have evaluated the existing uh, conditions and Jeremy is, is gonna talk with us about that and also evaluating the needs for the new indoor pool. And that's really where you, the citizens and community members come in so that uh, we can collect your feedback and learn more about uh, what it is that, that you are wanting and expecting out of the pool at the Southeast Community Center. Uh, we also are going to be recommending desired elements and amenities, and again, that comes, comes from uh, community feedback. 
We then will begin to develop a, a concept, so the ideas and what is what could go into the Southeast Community Center, which will lead us into the design of your new pool at the Southeast Community Center. So those were some of the goals um, at, uh, as a part of uh, this project and study. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Jeremy, and he's going to talk about the existing conditions uh, at the pool. Wonderful. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, so to uh, begin the process, we're going to look at uh, the existing conditions, understand what we have now to see where uh, we'd like to go. So um, just some general overview comments on the facility itself. Originally opened in 2019, uh, combined surface area between uh, three basins in the pool um, are is 1,700 square feet with a combined total volume of 16,000 gallons of water. Uh, the three separate spaces in the pool, uh, one rec pool and two smaller pool bodies um, used for various purposes um, in the facility. Uh, downfalls of the facility is it is currently lacking, lacking modern uh, amenities and programming spaces and is experiencing decreasing patron use. Now focusing in on the rec pool, the larger pool in the facility right now, um, ranges in depths from zero to three feet, has a nice beach entry, um, which is nice for a recreational facility, uh, has stair entry on the, the deeper three foot area side, uh, located in the, uh, the kind of the middle area of the rec pool is a large play feature structure for the kiddos. Um, some issues currently being experienced in the rec pool are is some corrosion on the stainless steel gutter, uh, which uh, can be problematic and um, something that needs addressed or else it will get worse. Um, and then also experiencing some water quality issues in the rec pool. Um, this could uh, likely stemming from some fil filtration issues in the mechanical room, which we'll, we'll cover um, here in a few slides. And lastly, uh, the rec pool coating is a plaster type coating um, and is currently experiencing some cracking, which is uh, common in that style of coating. For the smaller pools, uh, these are used for various purposes, warm water use, uh, therapy, um, and resistance tile swimming. Uh, there are two of them, uh, slightly different sizes, um, but my, uh, small nonetheless. Uh, stair entry into each of them, and then each is provided with some stainless steel um, uh, rails throughout the basin for some more therapy type um, use in those, in those basins. Uh, one uh, basin that we know of is experiencing some significant water loss issues um, that has been problematic for uh, some time, um, which I believe is um, uh, kind of forcing some closures of that, that basin. So um, issues being had that are not allowing us to use that space currently as intended. Um, another um, somewhat downfall of these smaller pools is there's a limited number of users. So um, likely getting into these basins for a specific use, uh, for example, therapy, uh, and just due to the small nature of the pools, there's um, only a, a limited number of people can use them. Now onto the mechanical and filtration um, rooms. Uh, currently, af or after reviewing these spaces, um, noticing some significant corrosion um, in the mechanical and chemical spaces, which is likely due to some HVAC issues. Um, so uh, important goal of the project will be to improve on those HVAC, uh, on the HVAC design to um, ideally prevent some of this uh, similar corrosion in the future. Um, additionally, there is currently a UV system in place um, used for the, the treatment of the pool water and it's currently non-functional. Um, for the filtration of the various pools, there's actually two different types. One, uh, the filtration type for the rec pool is a uh, what's called a vacuum sand filter. And um, these are notorious for having some operational challenges and I, the, the facility is currently having some significant operational challenges with it, which um, likely is contributing to some water quality issues. So it'll be important to understand um, what options we have for filtration on the new, uh, the renovated facility uh, to help prevent these, these issues in the future. The smaller basins are served by cartridge style filters, um, which is another common filtration type um, but different from that of the rec pool. Um, for the basin or for the various pools, there are multiple different types of chemicals being used. So ideally we'd like to look at um, consolidating the, the chemical usage. So we're um, not using different chemicals in different spaces. 
Um, and lastly, for the mechanical area, there are some existing heaters that um, allow independent temperatures for the various basins out there. So the one pool can operate at a higher temperature as uh, compared to the next, uh, the next pool. So some flexibility on temperature of those pools currently. Uh, main building proper, um, after reviewing, uh, I believe there's likely some insufficient HVAC and some potential roof, roof leaks that are leading to some um, more issues within the building. Um, for example, there's some staining on the walls um, from that, those leaks coming in, as well as some coating delamination, which you can see in like that top right picture there. Um, additionally, uh, likely HVAC uh, or the lack of HVAC is causing some corrosion issues on the various uh, metallic items within the space, such as the doors, um, piping supports, hangers, etc. cetera. Um, and there are also some cock joints, um, cock joints between the tilt-up panels that were used to construct the building um, that have painting over them that is um, subsequently cracked. Um, so that'll be another thing that we'd like to address uh, within this project. Uh, support or ancillary spaces, some dry spaces for the facility. Uh, top two pictures there are adjacent spaces that are attached to, um, to the pool area. One is an office slash lifeguard area, uh, top left picture there. And the top right is a multi-purpose room, uh, carpeted room that uh, is used for various purposes, birthday parties and whatnot. Um, currently, there's no dedicated space for storing a pool accessories, um, and uh, they are now being stored on the pool deck. So um, it'd be nice to look at um, providing some areas to provide some of that storage off of the pool deck. Uh, currently, no family changing space um, for the facility, um, which is a, a common and popular um, thing to provide for aquatic, aquatic facilities these days. Um, some issues being experienced is some wet areas migrating into the dry spaces, such as the carpeted area of the multi-purpose room um, and other adjacent spaces. And then the uh, restroom slash locker room changing area um, for the facility serving the pool area um, after review, looking at some outdated fixtures, lockers and whatnot. Um, and we'd like to look at addressing the open shower area currently in the, in the shower or in the um, locker spaces. And with that, I will turn it back over to Lauren for some future visioning talk. Yes, thank you. So as we move forward and, and start developing ideas for, for what can be uh, become this, this new pool, um, one of the places that we start and where we, we really are interested in hearing from community members is when you think of aquatics, aquatics uh, in this pool, how do you envision utilizing it? And there are a variety of programs and activities that can occur in, in a space like the indoor pool at the community center. So um, you can see some of the examples here uh, of common activities and and um, what we're looking for is what do you want? What is it that you are looking for? Because we want to make sure that we provide a solution that you and, and the general community want um, and that you will utilize and, and bring not just yourself, but your family members, your friends. Um, and this facility can be that revitalized kind of hub for aquatic activities. So lap swimming is, is, a, is a good example of that. Pool rentals and birthday parties. We know that families and kids love to go swimming, particularly when it's very hot outside, but also, um, you know, when it's chilly outside. And having a place to, to be able to offer birthday parties is it can be very attractive. Senior aquatic programs, whether that's just water walking or it's aqua fitness or whatever that is, there are there are considerations for senior aquatic programs. Swim lessons is a is is a is a very big program. It's a life-saving program and it's a way for kids to learn a skill, but also adults uh, can, can uh, learn that same skill. Um, and, and be able to progress in that skill over the lifespan. Uh, water fitness and water aerobics for, the, for uh, community members is also very popular. Toddler swim or a baby swim time where little ones can get in the pool, maybe without you know, uh, the older ones splashing around, um, uh, you know, having a dedicated time for them uh, can, can occur. And then also just general uh, open swimming where you, again, and, and your family members and your friends can go and just enjoy the facility at your leisure in the type of way that, that you enjoy. So when we think about pools, uh, we like to begin after we, we, we kind of uh, assess what, what 
um, activities can go on in there. We want to look at the types of spaces that are conducive or support those activities. Um, so let's begin with zero depth. Zero depth in a pool is a very common popular amenity and feature um, that is offered in, in modern uh, facilities. And so what a, a zero depth is, if you're not familiar with it, is it's similar to if you were gonna be at, at the beach and you start up on the sand and you, you slowly walk into the water and it gradually gets deeper. That is what we mean by zero depth and, and that is gonna be in, in the shallow part of the pool. And oftentimes we see those toddler features, those sprays, those, those kid features um, being located within the zero depth or very nearby it. As we progress down the pool, we start to look at shallow water and we, we identify that as anywhere between two to four feet. Um, and, and shallow water is used by, by many uh, people, but also uh, by many activities and programs as well. So shallow water can be used to, to enter the pool, um, to get to deeper water, but also for a variety of programs. You can see the little one uh, uh, in, the, in the middle column on the top. She's just kind of hanging on the wall there. And that's a good example of a, an age group that will often utilize uh, shallow water. Uh, swimming lessons are going to be very popular here as, where, uh, as well. Deep water is another uh, element uh, that is up for consideration and we identify deep water as anything over five feet. Um, and there are some programs, specific programs that, that can go into deep water. And so what you can see here on the screen are a few of those programs. Deep water uh, aqua fitness or deep water aerobics is, is an example of an activity that can go in deep water. Um, although we're not in person, if you were to see me stand up, five feet is deep water and that's where I would be doing my aqua aerobics. Um, but for others, they may need a, a little bit deeper water. And you can see uh, in that photo on the far right on the top, that's actually uh, a lifeguard. And so one of the identified activities that may uh, occur in this pool is gonna be lifeguard training. And so we need to think about what is needed for the lifeguards in order for them to uh, be able to train and utilize the pool to receive their certifications. Um, and, and that's another example of how we use deep water. And there are other features and ways to, to use deep water, but those are a few examples. And we do understand that as a, as a part of the Southeast Community Center pool, lap swimming is, is, is likely going to be a popular um, activity or something that uh, community members and, uh, and um, uh, users of the community center are going to be looking for. And so as we go through concept development and we begin to put together your options, uh, here are an example of two different indoor pools. And what we're looking at is on the left, this is a, a pool that has four lanes. And on the right is a pool that has two lanes with some recreational space uh, kind of tacked onto it. And the reason we bring this up and like to talk about it is we only have a, a, a finite space in order to get all the features and amenities uh, in there that, that we're looking for. And so um, we are looking for, uh, looking for citizen feedback as far as how important is lap swimming because the more lap lanes we have, the less recreational space, let's say the zero depth or that shallow water, the less space we have for those types of amenities. And so it is very important for us to understand uh, about the lap lanes and explore the different options for lap lanes to ensure that we have a good balance between recreational amenities, lap lanes, deep water, and any of the, any of the other um, options that are, that are out there that we are exploring. So that's a, a kind of a rundown of the different spaces we're looking at for uh, the, the new pool. So let's talk about features real quick. So when it comes to features, these are those types of things that make a space unique or make or activate the space. And so here are a few examples, again, that, that are, uh, we, we would like to hear from the general community about regarding your, your support and interest in. And one of those things is a youth play structure. So right now you do have a youth uh, a play structure in, your, in the current pool. So this is somewhat similar uh, to uh, what, what you're used to and what you've seen before. And they come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen here, this is a bit of, of a larger unit, um, but it, it is an option uh, uh, for the new pool. Sprays are going to be common for um, our little swimmers, so, so our young ones, our non-swimmers, or those who are, are getting comfortable in the water. And we often see these sprays, as I mentioned previously, around the zero depth area. 
uh, kind of to tack on to that or to build on to that. Um, a toddler slide is also very common, but you can notice that the youth play structure and the toddler slide that we show on the far right, you know, there's slides in both those elements. The play structure does take up more, more space. And so, you know, looking at the toddler slide could free up some, some space within the water, uh, uh, the water itself. And so that is an example of how we can maybe pare down something big, but still offer a fun feature um, uh, for kids. Other pool features that, that could be included in, in the new pool are going to be an in-water bench. Uh, that's what you're seeing here on the left. So in-water benches can be used for a few things. Uh, one, uh, uh, swimmers can sit on that to take a rest. We will see adults utilize uh, the in-water bench to watch their kids or just to take a rest or just sit there and enjoy it. Um, we can also see swim lessons or programs utilize this safely, of course, um, uh, in the middle of, of their activity. So in-water benches can be common um, um, for facilities like this. And a unique idea or different idea, knowing that lap swimming um, is, is something that community members may be looking for here. Another idea is actually to utilize swim jets. And what swim jets are is um, they're nozzles within, within the wall and they shoot out water pretty quickly and you swim against them. So instead of swimming you know, back and forth on a lap lane, you can actually stay, stay still uh, uh, up against the wall. And you can see this gentleman here, that's what he's doing. He's facing the wall, swimming in place. And that's what swim jets allow you to do. But um, the, uh, one of the benefits fits behind this, like I said previously, is that um, maybe we can reduce the number of lap lanes that, that we offer so that we can free up some available space to, to be able to, to build um, uh, in other types of ways, whether that's in the zero depth area or other areas. Up on the screen here, these are some of the active features. So these are gonna be for our older kids, even adults. Um, I, we certainly have seen plenty of adults uh, utilize each of, each of these amenities here. So on the far left is gonna be the climbing wall. And this is a structure that um, typically goes in deep water. Um, so the deeper the water, the higher that, that climbing wall can go. So you can see her climbing up that wall and that interestingly, that wall actually uh, uh, hangs over the water. Um, so as you ascend, you're actually up over the water. So when you fall down, you drop straight into the water. Um, and it's, it's a, a fun activity. Uh, volleyball is also common. That's relatively easy to put in, in a facility and is very flexible as far as when you do and you do not have that feature in there. Uh, so when we talk about birthday parties or we talk about use above and beyond just general open swim, volleyball is, is an easy way to incorporate new and different activities. And basketball is also very common um, uh, for kids and, and adults as well and takes up relatively little space. So a few facilities just to show you um, some different examples of, of how we may be able to uh, put these, these elements together. Uh, we're going to show you a few images here. So this is the Linwood YMCA in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so in this facility, what you're looking at are, are um, several lap lanes. That's what's over to the right. Um, short course lap lanes there uh, that is attached to a zero depth entry with the, with a few features. You can see the, the the water feature in the middle of the zero depth area there. And like I said, that's at the Linwood YMCA. So in this type of setup, we can see swim lessons. We can see general open swim. We can see uh, fitness occur here. We can see quite a few different activities um, occurring in, in this space. Another way to lay this out um, is like the Blue Valley Rec Center in, in Overland Park. I realize um, I left, left off uh, Park there, but in Overland Park, Kansas. And in this case, we have two different bodies of water. On kind of the lower part of this photo, we have uh, several lap lanes. And on the left of that, kind of towards the top, is their recreational pool that is zero depth. And this is an example of how we can pull the pools apart and they can actually be independent pools to each, uh, uh, from each other. And interesting about the Blue Valley Rec Center is, and you can see the call out photo uh, uh, kind of over the lap lanes, is that this pool was designed to be an instructional pool. And so they have a lot of swim lessons that occur uh, within this facility. And this platform that you see, uh, in addition to the staircases, those are some examples of how they chose to, to integrate some design to be able to support um, the activities that, that they really uh, offer every day and are very popular to them. 
uh, at Trail Point Aquatics and Wellness. This is in Ankeny, Iowa. And this is an example of, of reducing those lap lines down to two and having that uh, attached kind of rec space. You can see over there in the far left uh, of that photo, a uh, basketball goal um, and just shallow water. There's a floatable actually that's in there as well. It's, it's a it's an item that kids can climb on basically. So that's an example of, of reducing our lap lanes down, uh, but still offering them and then also having a, an attached shallow water space. So what we're looking for from community members now is going to be to please complete the online survey uh, that is as being is being provided. Um, so up on the screen, you can see a link to that survey. Uh, this survey is available uh, on on uh, the city's website. So we are looking for people to complete this survey and we encourage your friends and family members to complete it as well so that we can get a good sense of, of what it is community members are looking for. This is available, I believe, through January 4th. Um, and, and will be live and accessible to you through that date. So we do encourage you to complete this if you have not already done so. So at this time, this will complete uh, uh, the bulk of our presentation. Um, Scott, is there a way that you'd like people to submit comments or questions um, after this? Would you like them to do that on the survey or some other method? Yes, I would just say, use that email to my email address at scott.overbay at kcmo.org. You could send your comments to that email address. Okay, great, thank you. So with that, I think that's gonna conclude uh, the presentation. Thank you for, for watching this and for submitting your feedback as, as we continue to develop what will become the new Southeast Community Center pool. So thank you. We good, Jen? I think you're on mute. I am on mute. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to stop recording so that we can get the um, presentation kind of wrapped up and.